What's up everybody, Jack here from Half Chrome, and today I got a couple of 3D printers. We're gonna talk about this one, the Ender 5 S1, and I'm gonna compare it to this guy, the Ender 3, right? This is kind of a mid-tier, nicer uh, 3D printer, and this guy here is kind of your basic for beginners. But before I get into this 3D printer, I wanna talk a little bit about 3D printing in general. Who's it for, right? It sounds like a great idea. Is it something you're considering doing? you need to know a little bit about it. So if you're interested just in the review of this guy, uh, check down below, I've got some timestamps where you can go ahead and skip to that if you wanna miss this rant. But it might be mildly entertaining. Also, I had some errors uh, that kept coming up on this Ender 5, uh, E06 and E07, uh, having to do with temperature, and uh, took me a while to figure out, but actually, pretty easy fix <laughs> once I figured it out. Okay, so let's talk about 3D printing. It sounds fantastic. I've been doing it for a while. I have a handful of 3D printers, as does Chris, and I use it for a variety of different things, right? There are various different drone parts, camera connections, uh, dog toys, little trinkets for my kids. I've even done some litho panes. These are really cool. And even some custom things around the house, uh, like I needed something to go over uh, a pole in my basement, I did some flooring and I need something to seal those joints. But either way, these things are really cool. So when you think about it, having a tool like this is really pretty awesome. It's super versatile and you can do a lot of different things. But it's not for everybody. It's not like a computer printer where I just type out a document, I hit print and then I go grab it and it's ready to go. There's a whole lot of setup that goes into just getting a small little print. This was a hobby invented by nerds for nerds, so it's not incredibly user-friendly. You gotta do some deep dives to figure out how things work. You gotta figure out your machine. Uh, you gotta figure out the software. There's a whole lot that goes into 3D printing. But it all starts with the assembly. This guy, the S1, uh, they say you can do it in 10 minutes. No, it took me about 30 minutes, and I put two of them together, so I've done it a couple of times. About 25, 30 minutes to put it together, but I've had other machines that were just kind of a heap of parts took me over an hour. So kind of depending on what you're picking up, know that you're gonna have to spend some time just putting it together. Then once you have it together, you gotta make sure that these beds are incredibly level, like to the tolerance of a sheet of paper. And if you happen to move it, right, I don't usually print here. I'm gonna have to re-level, recalibrate basically the next time I try to print something or it just isn't going to work. Then you gotta make sure these darn little things stick to the bed. I could have something that's been printing for hours and then all of a sudden it just comes undone and you know I just wasted hours of time. That's the other thing. It takes hours to build anything uh, that's worth doing, right? Like these little trinkets, these little goofy bunnies, I printed a ton of them. They're just under an hour. But these dog bones, I think this one took me 17 hours. This, this iPhone case, I think that was like three hours. It takes a lot of time to 3D print. So don't just think, I'm gonna hit a button like printing a piece of paper from a computer. Nope, it's gonna take some time. Then there's the different filaments, right? Do you want ABS? Do you want TPU? Do you want PLA? You gotta know what you're looking for. Pet G, who knows? There's all sorts of different filaments. They all require different temperatures, different settings, different bed settings. Sometimes you gotta heat the bed. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes you need it super hot. So you kind of have to understand exactly what it is you're looking for. Do you need something that is flexible? Right? That's a TPU. I love printing with TPU for, uh, you know, for a lot of these different drone parts. This is uh, for a camera to connect to a drone, but not all printers can print TPU. So you gotta have something that, that's capable of doing that. Do you need to print supports, right? Will it fail because there isn't enough support? There are so many factors that go into 3D printing. This is a hobby for tinkers, right? You gotta have some time to dial in your settings. If you're not gonna set aside some time, you don't want a 3D printer. Now I use Thingiverse a ton. There's lots of great prints out there. Almost anything you can think of is already there, but what if I wanna customize something? What if I wanna change something? You're gonna to have to learn how to deal with some of that using CAD software. It's a whole nother ball of wax. Plus the slicer, right? Once you have what you want, you have to slice it and get it ready for your printer. Another step, another set of software. 
So yes, there is a lot that goes into 3D printing. So if you're still around, you wanna learn about this guy, the S1, here we go. So I did some comparisons, right? This is a good old Ender 3. You can get one of these for about 200 bucks, but this Ender 5 S1 is usually just under $500. I've got a coupon code below if you're interested in it. It's gonna cost you about $459. So make sure you check that out if this is something you're looking for. And the first thing you're gonna notice about this is it's solid. This is a big steel cage. And that's really important because this thing prints fast and if it's moving fast, it needs this extra support to kind of help keep it stable. So really well built machine. You can just tell this is really nice. Whereas, you know, something like this Ender 3, yeah, it's, it's okay. But you know, when you have something like this, absolutely a better machine. It's got a touch screen in the front, super intuitive, easy to use. Um, I like that versus this one here. We just have a knob dial. Now this build plate here is actually pretty nice. I think it's polycarbonate, um, it's magnetic. Um, and when you pull it off, it kind of bends and uh, the prints just kind of peel right off. And that's pretty darn nice. Um, this one here, this has a glass bed. I think I upgraded this. This has some upgraded parts. Um, and a lot of people do like glass beds, but I found it easier to get things off of this polycarbonate. I think that's what it's called. Now the hot end up here is what's special about this. This is a Sprite extruder, so I can do TPU and flexible filaments, and you can also do high temperature filaments because this thing gets up to 300 degrees Celsius. Yeah, that's pretty darn hot. So you are gonna be able to do things like ABS. Now this bed has auto leveling and that is, that is an absolute must if you ask me when it comes to 3D printers. Um, you know, I did some test prints where I printed the same thing on both printers. This one, it took me three shots before it got something to stick, um, mostly because my bed was not 100% and perfectly level. This thing does it right away every time. This Ender 5, that's a really nice feature. Okay, so I did some uh, test printing on both machines at the same time. Um, I did some Stormtrooper heads in white on the Ender 5 and some Stormtrooper heads in green on the Ender 3. I wanted to compare to see how they ended up doing. And they both turned out fine. Um, I think the Ender 5 was a little bit better, especially when I ran it at 200% uh, or basically 2x speed. Uh, when I did that with the Ender 3, this one here, uh, it just didn't turn out quite as nice. So, you know, that could be a little bit to the filament changes and differences. Oh yeah, that's another thing I hate about this. You gotta store those filaments in like an air tight container and uh, my basement has a little bit of moisture. That's another problem. Uh, so I have to have special storage for my filament or it's gonna go bad. But yeah, this thing does a really nice job. Actually, you can speed prints up pretty well on this. Um, printing at two, 250% or two and a half times speed, it does a nice job even at faster prints. So you're gonna save some time with this guy. Now, if you need it super fine, I don't know if that's something I'd recommend, but um, you know, for little things, I had no problems printing little things uh, at quick speeds, just a time saver. Um, and you can do that with other printers. It just, they aren't quite as good. And like I said, it has this rigidity to it that just kind of helps keep everything solid when it's printing and moving at those high speeds. This is a 220 by 220 uh, by 280 bed. So that's something to keep in mind. And this one, uh, the bed moves up and down versus this guy here where my extruder and hot end move up and down, so that's just a difference of uh, mechanisms here. The Ender 5 here, you can print multiple different ways. I've been using an SD card. Uh, you can connect it directly to your computer or you can connect it via Wi-Fi, but you have to have an additional module that doesn't come with it in order to do that. So overall, it's a pretty solid machine. If you're thinking about getting into 3D printing, I would definitely consider it. I don't recommend things that don't have auto leveling beds. It's just such a headache and so nice to not have to worry about that. Uh, you know, you push a button, you do some basic leveling to start and then you push a button and it auto levels and it auto levels before at every print. It's, it's really nice. Now, I, I wasn't a super fan of how long it takes to kind of heat up, but you know, again, when I had it running next to this guy, it was 
basically the same. So that's kind of a wash. Power supply is solid. I believe it's 300, 350 watts. Uh, so it's a nice power supply. It also has a filament sensor. So if it runs out, it'll stop and you can change it. Currently makes a good machine. Um, there's a Creality uh, slicer, or you could just use Cura, uh, which is what I think the Creality slicer is based on. That's the most common one. That's what I've been using for my other printers. So that's what I used with this one. It's free software. Okay, so let's talk about some of the hiccups I had. Uh, I got this thing out of the box and I could print these little rabbits all day long. They printed just fine. Um, then the other test print, this boat would fail every time. I got an EO6. Um, I also got an EO6 error when I tried to print anything else and that was super frustrating. Um, some back and forth with the company and uh, I got another one sent out to me and then I was getting E07 errors. I was like, what the heck is going on there? They said they've never seen this before. So, so Chris actually took it to a friend of his that it's a super 3D printing guy. He knows his stuff and he got this thing working. Um, he had to change some PIDs. Basically it wasn't getting hot enough. I've been printing in my basement. I'm outside of Chicago, it gets cold down here. And that was kind of the issue or was it? Turns out, there's a switch in the back here uh, on the power supply. Yes, it ships as if it's connected to 230 volts. Well, in the United States, that's not the case. You need to flip the switch to 115. Um, and that solved all my problems. So I felt like an idiot, right? Uh, on this guy, I had to do the same thing, but it was like, in giant letters, there was a super giant sticker with an arrow pointing like, make sure you flip this switch to the right voltage. No, that was here, but it is actually in the manual. I missed it. So yeah, it's there on the bottom, but I missed it. And I suspect other people did too. Kind of felt like an idiot. Now, like I said, I got two of these things, but I already managed to mess the other one up. Uh, I got some ABS stuck in it, right? My ABS got old and the tolerance isn't great. And now it's stuck inside the hot end. So I got to take that apart. The joys of 3D printing. I swear I spend as much time fixing these things as I do uh, printing on them. Now well, that's a lie. Printing takes forever. <laughs> Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you're looking for one of these guys, uh, I've got a link down below. Don't forget there's a coupon code down there as well. It is an affiliate link, so it will help support the channel. Now we do other uh, tech related things, mostly drones, some cameras, and we're getting into some e-transportation as well. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Good luck, everyone.